So I got a little project for the Tundra today. Something I've been uh, kind of doing some research on for a while now. Been a little scared to do it, but I decided just to, to dive in. I camp in this thing a lot during the winter. And uh, some of it's in the Midwest or North. And uh, it's usually off grid. And if any of you guys camp off grid, you know that running a heater, um, there's really no way to run a heater for a long time, several hours, unless you have a, a generator or a really big power bank. It just it just draws too much electricity. So uh, I've seen some guys on YouTube installing these diesel heaters, basically a Chinese diesel heater that you can order off of Amazon. They're they're fairly cheap, and um, they run off a of diesel, and they're vented outside the truck, so there's no carbon monoxide poison. They have an exhaust. And they just have a little combustion cham chamber, and so what it does is it it uh, it heats air. It has a fresh intake air, and it heats the air in a combustion chamber, and blows it out. And it's a dry heat. There's no moisture in it. Uh, usually, it, but in, before I've used a buddy heater, and I would uh, run it for a few hours at night, turn it down, just run it on pilot, cut it off, and go to bed. Wake up, of course, it'd be super cold. Have to crank it up, heat everything up, get dressed. And it just leaves a lot of moisture in the uh, shell of the truck. And you can't run it a long time because of carbon monoxide. I have this thing pretty pretty sealed, pretty tight and, and insulated just to be able to sleep in here and stay warm. Uh, so I purchased one of these. Wasn't very much. Got a little little fuel tank. This is a Vivor. I bought it off of Amazon. It's uh, It's got a remote control and, and it connects by, via Bluetooth to your phone. So I think I paid like 100 and 20 bucks for it or whatever uh, it came with a bigger tank so I bought this little tank for less than 20 but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mount it right here and have this tank right here so I can just open my tailgate and fill it with diesel I don't know how long it runs off a tank of diesel but from what I've read it's a very long time so now the bad thing about it is is to mount it the way I want it so I'll be safe from carbon monoxide poisoning and all that is I have to use this turret plate and I have to drill a hole in the bed of my tundra five inches around not too happy about that it is what it is let's get started I'm gonna kind of go through it I might not be as detailed as you'd like me to be uh, it's very hot here in South Louisiana it's frustrating doing something like this in this heat because it's just wears you down and you get soaking wet and all that so I'm just gonna go through it and do the best I can do don't know if I'll get it all done this evening I may have to come back and finish up it's quite a little process but I'm hoping this thing will work out like I planned so I measured out where I wanted the heater to go and where this turret plate needs to go which would be basically like this um, I had to make sure that the heater wasn't going to be too far this way because this is where the leg of my uh, bed will go. So what I did was I took and I just drilled enough where this center bit will go through the bed right here. There's the hole right there. And I'm going to get under here and make sure it looks good from the bottom. So there's my hole right there. And if I took this hole saw and I pretty much held it up to that hole. You can see I got plenty of room here to do what I need to do. So that, that looks good. Uh, there's the frame of the truck right there and over there, over here, is the uh, fender wall. And then here is the bumper and all. So. That looks good. We're going to go with that. Okay. Wasn't too bad. I think my old drill is kind of crapping out on me. But the turret plate fits good. Good deal. Good deal. So the worst part is over as far as drilling a hole in my truck. <laughs> kind of sucks but it is what it is this metal was in here when I bought the truck and I like it a lot this diamond plate so I'm gonna leave it there so I'm just gonna clean this area up 
with a little acetone because once I get that turret plate in there I'm actually going to seal it from the bottom and the top with some sealant just for extra protection against uh, that exhaust for instance if the wind is blowing that exhaust up under the truck it won't seep through here all right guys so I had a little issues with this uh, so I basically found this it's a magnet with a hole in it and I got some washers to put on it and I'm gonna put a washer here and uh, I'll just line those holes up so when I screw it, it kind of stabilizes it. This was an issue. Most people's not going to have that issue. I could cut this out, but I don't want to. I uh, have to drag a grinder out and everything. And this is a little loose, but once I put a couple screws through here to the bed, it's going to stabilize it good. So that's nice and level, and uh, I think we're going to be good with that. So we're going to go that route. So that goes like that. So these four bolts will tighten it down to this turret plate. This is the fuel line that will come up from under the truck. We'll put that little cap back on there. And this is the air return, which is the fresh air, I mean the, the uh, fresh air intake. And then this is the exhaust. So I'm going to tighten these up and we'll get it we'll get it situated they give you the insert to go in them but you gotta you gotta drill a hole in it so basically there's this goes on the inside of the tank and then you have a two o-rings and this o-ring fits right in there and this is a nut that tightens down the sandwiches. So that's a quarter inch bit. I don't want that to be tight for sure. Okay, I think that's going to work. So I'm going to feed this wire through here. And then feed my nipple on that wire. And just bend it around a little bit. So that I can pull my wire through. I mean my nipple through. There we go. Just like that. There we go. You can see I got those threads coming through there. I'm gonna just cut this wire. Slide that o-ring over there. that nut on there that o-ring will just sink up in that groove I snug this bolt down not too much you don't want to don't want to crimp that that uh, nipple there I think that bad boy is ready for diesel. <laughs> Alright, so the next thing I have to do is drill a hole for this fuel line because this fuel line is going to go down, come out of this diesel tank, go under the truck, and then it'll connect to the bottom of that turret underneath the heater. So I want the fill hole on this uh, tank up here so I can just drop the tailgate and, and fill this thing with diesel with diesel fuel so and I'm not sure I, I think I'm probably going to want to turn it like this but I think I'm going to drill this hole right here 
That way I got the option to turn it here or turn it here. Either way. So I'm going to drill this hole a little bit bigger than this tube so I can silicone around it to keep it from vibrating or something up against that metal. So I was looking under the truck and I think I need to go about six inches in for this saw, uh, diesel fuel line, because there's a there's a, a metal bracket under here and I, I can go that route but I'll be over that bracket. I think I'd rather clear that bracket. So I think I'm going to go about six inches in. I'm just going to put that fuel line right here, which shouldn't be any problem at all. All right, so we got the box built. Fuel tank's going to go there. I think the fuel line will come out of here. And uh, maybe I'll just drill a hole in here. And then it'll go into the fuel filter. Fuel filter will go right here. And the pump will go back there. All right, so we got our, our uh, fuel line attached to our tank and to our fuel filter. So next I need to cut a piece of line to go from this filter to this uh, to the back of this pump right here. And then it'll come out of this pump down through the truck and up under the truck into the diesel heater itself. All right, so for this hole right here, this fuel line is going to come out of this pump and go into this hole right here, under the truck and back up under the bottom and connect, connect to the heater. But I don't like it going through this uh, just metal, you know, even though I filed it and I sanded it, that's a pretty sharp edge right there. I don't like that fuel line just sitting on it constantly. So I got some of this plastic uh, wire wrap and I'm going to actually encase this fuel line from where it comes out of here uh, up to where it comes in this hole right here. So I'm going to get under the truck and feed this up through here before and then feed that fuel line in it so that it's got a you know a softer barrier than just that hard sheet metal right there just so it doesn't wear, wear that fuel line thin and cause a leak over time. So here's the turret plate right here and this this is where this fuel line will connect and it'll come down and it needs to go through this hole right here to go back up into the truck and to the uh, fuel pump itself. So I'm just going to feed this up through that hole. Alright guys, so I've got the uh, I've got all the fuel line hooked up in the truck so I just got to get under the truck hook the fuel line up to the uh, to the diesel heater and put the clamp on it, cut the excess off, and I'm going to go ahead and, and seal around that turret. I've got some Permatex here that I'm going to use. It's like a, a muffler sealer that um, can resist heat and, and just keep... The, the exhaust for this heater is under the truck. It's going to stick out the side, but you know, the wind could blow it back up or whatever. And this will seal all that to keep any of that from seeping back up into the truck. Probably wouldn't be a problem even if I didn't put this, but it's just added security. And uh, it also seals it off to keep any moisture, bugs, or just whatever from coming up in the little bitty cracks that are around that between that turn and the, the bed of the truck. So I'm going to climb under there and do all that. Now, alright, that zip tie will hold that out of the way. Got that zip tie there. And I'm going to just take this permatex and we'll go all the way around the, the edge of this stuff
all right guys as you can tell so I've got the exhaust mounted and I've got the fresh air intake mounted and this is my wiring that uh, I'm sorry this is my uh, fuel line hangs down here I need to zip tie this here and I think I'm I think I'm gonna take like a foam like a window unit uh, like an air conditioner a window unit air conditioner filter and wrap around this and zip tie it just for like an extra little filter I may try that I got my exhaust run out right here so uh, I just about got everything ready to go so I'm gonna run this heater off of this this is an anchor Solix C1000 it's a 1000 what hour solar generator and I had to uh, I had to buy a converter box right here that converts AC current to DC current because my little cigarette adapter on here wasn't it wasn't strong enough on the uh, anchor to to fire up the diesel heater I tried it and it didn't work so I had to order this this is a it was just pulling too many amps this is a 30 amp uh, converter that converts AC to DC so I can plug it in to my uh, AC outlets on my solar generator and then run it just with a cigarette plug this, this wiring here goes around to the diesel heater I'll show you in just a second and it plugs in here and I've already primed it and fired it up so I know it'll work but let me show you what I got here this I just built this it's a little panel right here so I could duct it out and I've got everything mounted the uh, tank is mounted here and secure to the truck bed there's the heater there I just got to wrap up some wiring it's just ducted here just like that so I'm going to fire it up and let you guys listen I'll plug in the uh, converter in my AC button now I got power to my converter just got to plug that in there so now I've got power to this heater I'm going to turn it on You can hear the fuel pump kicking on now. Some people say this thing is a little loud and they, they can't sleep with it going. Uh, I don't think it's going to be a problem. It doesn't sound too loud to me, but I, if, if it is too loud, I've seen people put foam around it to kind of deaden that sound. So I'll try that. You can hear the you can hear it, hear it firing up now. And that fuel pump will pick up speed as it starts to burn the diesel. We've got air coming out now, and it's getting warm. Yeah, it's getting hot now. You can really hear that pump kicking now. And it's warm. I'm going to go ahead and shut it off because, I mean, it's already like 85 degrees out here. I just wanted to make sure it was going to heat and show you guys how it heats. Uh, this is a little, the little remote control that you can mount anywhere, and it also works Bluetooth, and it has this handheld remote control. I'm going to shut it off. And uh, you can Bluetooth it to your phone, and, and I think it works a lot of different ways. I haven't really dove into the remote. All these things come with a different types of remotes so if you if whenever if you buy one and you go to install it and you want to learn how to work the uh, the little wired hardwired remote or if you buy a Bluetooth model there's a ton of videos on YouTube about how to work the remote I haven't dove into it a lot but it, it seems pretty straightforward so looking in the back of my truck that is where the the solar generator will go and then I'll mount that little converter box probably in that same cubby 
and this wiring just goes around goes under my bed goes to the heater right there and this is just a little shelving system that I've put in here to store my belongings so there you have it diesel heater in the tundra in the truck camper ready to go all I got to do is add a couple solar panels to the roof probably just going to keep them in here stick them on the roof when the sun's out I think this anchor Solux uh, solar generator is going to run this diesel heater a few days before I have to recharge it I can recharge it by the truck plug it into an outlet or a solar panel either way uh, but that's it I just wanted to kind of give a brief video of the install on it and give you guys some ideas of maybe want to do do this uh, yourself to your truck won't be long I will be going to Missouri for a little while come back down here and in November and December I'll be somewhere in the Midwest I think I'm ready for some cold weather ready to try this thing out thank you guys for watching I'll see you on the next one